All right, everyone. In this video, we're going to calculate the equivalent inertia and equivalent stiffness of the system using the energy method. Um, as you can see, we have only one degree of freedom, which is noted by theta. Um, we will represent the mass of the springs as being a third of the masses attached to both ends. And the reason we're going to do this is that we're going to um, calculate or use those rather in the uh, kinetic energy portion of the calculations. So what the energy method says is that uh, the energy, the potential energy is equal to one half times the equivalent stiffness times the displacement squared. And the way that we're going to do this is that we're going to sum up all of the potential energy terms of the system and then bring them together so that it has this form over here. And we're going to say that's what's in between one half and the displacement square is equal to the equivalent stiffness. And so here we're going to have the spring elements, which are going to contain the potential energy. And then the other part is that the kinetic energy is equal to is equal to one half times the equivalent inertia times the velocity square. And so the way that we're going to do this is that we're going to sum up all of the inertia terms and we're going to do the same thing as we did with the potential energy. And we're going to say that what is going to be in between one half and the velocity square is the equivalent inertia. Uh, one thing that we're going to need is the parallel axis theorem. And the reason is that uh, we are rotating the bar around this point over here rather than at its center of gravity. Okay, uh, one last thing is that the displacement at the left end uh, using the arc length formula, we know that it's equal to L over 3 times theta and at the right end it's equals to uh, 2 times L over 3 times theta. So I'm just going to write this quickly arc length is equal to the radius times the angle in radians and that is the arc length formula as you know or should know at least okay so let's start by calculating the distance d and d is the distance between where we are rotating and the center of gravity so we have D is equal to 2L over 3 minus L over 2. And if you can't see it right away, that's okay. I'm going to make a quick diagram. So we have where we are rotating. That's 2L over 3. And that's where the center of gravity is. So at half the distance. So the value for d is quite simply 2L over 3 minus L over 2. Uh, that's d, yeah. Okay. All right. And that is equal to L over 6. Okay. Let's do the kinetic energy first since we already calculated uh, D. So V is equal to, let's start off with the mass attached at the right end. So one half times the mass, which we said we'll hypothesize that it's equal to a third of the total mass of the spring times the distance that it travels, or the velocity rather, 2L over 3 times the velocity, all this squared. We're going to do the same thing for the spring attached to the left. Okay. And then we're going to add the inertia of the bar. So, quick note, 
where ICG is equal to 1 over 12 times mass times length squared. Okay. So, yeah, that's for a rod. All right. So, 1 over 12 times mass times length squared plus the mass times d. And d is L over 6 square times theta dot squared. Okay. So we will expand this. So we have 4 times the mass of the spring times L squared over 3 times 3 squared. So that's 3 to the power 3. So that's 27 times theta dot squared. Same thing here. All right, we ha here we have uh, mass times length squared. Here we're going to have mass times length squared as well. But we're going to have 1 over 12 plus 1 over 36. So that's 4 over 36. That's 3 over 36, sorry. Is that so? So that's 36, 3, 4. No, so 4, I'm sorry. 4 over 36 times the mass length squared times velocity squared. Okay. So let's bring all of these guys together. 1 over 2 times 5 times the mass of the spring length squared over 27 plus mass times length squared over 9 because we divided by 4 and all of that times the velocity squared. Therefore, the equivalent inertia is equal to this guy over here. That's the first part of our answer. OK, let's do the potential energy. Uh, there's a note here. You might be tempted to say that since the center of gravity is moving, then there's a change in potential energy. But that is actually offset by the displacement, the, the static displacement of the spring. So we don't need to take it into account into our calculation. Because we, we could, but they're going to be canceled by uh, each other, meaning the, the static deflection and the uh, displacement of the center of gravity. All right, so we have the first spring and we have the second spring. And that's it. So let's do the spring that is attached to the left. One half times its spring constant times its displacement, which is L over 3 times theta squared plus the right hand spring, which is K, 2L over 3 times theta squared. And so let's simplify this right off the bat. K L over 3, L squared over 9 rather, plus K 
times 4 times L squared over 9. Easy does it. Set it a squared. So we get 5 K L squared over 9. Theta squared. And so we get that the equivalent stiffness is equal to this guy over here. And this concludes our example. All right, so before I let you go, what this really tells us is that instead of studying this system over here, an equivalent system that is much easier to study is this one over here. equivalent stiffness and equivalent mass and this is as I said the equivalent system you'll agree with me that this is much simpler than the original one whatever you your your studies tell you about this spring mass system will also be true about the rotational system the original one um, provided that the stiffness that you're using is the equivalent stiffness that we just calculated and same goes for the mass. If you want to have the PDF worksheet of this um, problem, I've posted it in the description below and as always, thanks for watching.